wannabe camel owner or simply an adoring camel fan, you're in the right place for some fun, useful and interesting camel talk. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. We're your hosts, I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. Join us here for fun learning about camels, how to care for, train and handle them, plus insider stories and interviews. And also some interesting stories of our lifestyle with camels, the good, the bad, the ugly and the very funny. Make sure you've subscribed now so you don't miss out on an episode. podcasts are an audio take of our video so be sure to check those out on our blog for lots of how-to visuals and of course lots of camels this is your one and only go-to podcast all about camels Hello, hello, hello. We're so glad to be here again to offer some great tips, tricks and whatever's camel stuff. Here we go. Let's get into this topic. And the topic today is how to choose the right camel. Well, there's a lot of little tricks attached to it. And um, look, sometimes uh, we get caught up in uh, in the emotion of it all. Um, and perhaps you're, you're in a position where you think, oh, this is the only camel, you know, this is the one, I'm, you know, I'm going to you know, buy this camel, etc., etc. Um, and that can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing as well. So, you know, there's a couple of things that really we need to emphasise, um, which will help you in choosing the right camel for you. Mm. And these, we actually have an, ex- like, uh, so we're going to be talking some different tips to what we already have written on our website i believe on our uh, camels for sale page on our website we have buying tips um simple things like you know a male male camel versus female camels and all that sort of stuff but these are a little bit probably more um detailed in how to help you choose the right camel for yourself Mm. okay so let's get started eh? and um We've actually got to make a distinction between um, uh, the domestic camel and also a feral camel. Well, we're talking Australian fer- feral, feral camels because that's where camels are feral. Well, yeah, there's other places around the world too. Like where? But, um, yeah, Australia does have the largest population of feral camels in the world, in case if you weren't aware of that. Um, and, of course, there's also Bactrian camels. There's domestic and there is... The wild, which obviously nobody's ever touched the wild, as in trained or domesticated the wild Bactrim camel, mm. or the wild, it's called the wild camel. Anyway. Yeah, that really interesting in that podcast um, when we're talking. Yeah, actually, if you want to learn about the wild camel, um, definitely go back and listen to our interview with John Hare. Incredible information. Mm. He's full of passion. Mm, definitely. All right, so let's have a look at the situation. Okay, so you're, whether it be domestic or whether it be um, a, a feral camel, okay, and you've gone somewhere, someone's selling a camel, they've uh, collected the camels out of the wild or they've, uh, uh, they've gone ahead and, um, you know, selling it domestically, um, this still applies, okay? You see the camels, they're in the pen or the yard, uh, whatever it is, you've got to the place where they're selling them. Uh, there's the pen of the yard there, and there's a camel, two, three camels, you know, in there. And which one do you choose? That's the question. Okay. So the camels would be, you know, standing there, obviously, or sitting down or whatever, and you're hanging over the rail. So what do you look for? Well, the first tip I'm going to look, uh, talk about is the eye. All right, the eye of the camel. Now, if the camel's eye is as wide as a dinner plate, then, well, basically it's showing some fear, it's showing concern um, of you being there or, or being in that situation. But if it's that sort of nice, rounded, smooth look, very calm looking eye, okay, then the camel's comfortable um, to a certain degree 
of being there and what's happening around it. And often you can tell if the camel's a little bit curious, like even though they might be standing back or what have you, you can tell if they're curious. But I also do want to cover, I mean, I don't want to be biased. So like this is like an Australian situation really um, because like in the United States, a lot of camels, are, you know, are singled out and for sale singly. So we'll be also, you know, just stick with us here because we will be going through some tips there on how to choose an already domesticated camel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, the eye actually tells a big story. And uh, the longer you look at the eye um, of the camel and see what it's looking at and how it's reacting to different things that might be happening around the place will give you a bit of an indication as to how that camel's feeling about what's happening around it. Yeah, Um, and if you're an animal person, you will pick up on this fairly well. Um, And camels can seem quite aloof, so definitely the eye is a a quick indicator on on how they're perceiving their environment around them at that particular time. Mm. But as an animal person, um, even if you're inexperienced with camel, you can get a feel for the situation, particularly if you dealt with other large animals. Um, But, yeah, the eyes is your indicator in this sense. Mm. It's sort of like going into a conference room and uh, having a chat with people and uh, you can tell a lot by people by looking through their eyes and, uh, you know, what sort of... uh yeah, you know, feelings or emotions of those persons having at that time, you know, do they feel angry, do they feel warm and welcoming or, you know, the eyes do tell a lot, that's for sure. And people put off energies, that's that's probably more prelevant, you know, people put off energies that are, are, are you know, inviting or not. Mm. 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 And that's yeah. definitely true in camels too. For sure, for sure. Now the second one is uh, the kick. Does a camel have a kick at all? Yeah, that's a possibility. All right, some camels that I've seen out of uh, the, the the feral herd um, uh, in Australia, have, in we Australia, have yeah, they don't it. have a kick, and uh, and just you know lift the leg up if you you know touch the leg with a, a stick or a poly, piece of poly pipe or something like that. I'm not, you know, only just uh, lightly touch just to see a bit of irritation and seeing whether or not they've got a kick or uh, whether or not they you know lift the leg up and oh, don't do that to me sort of thing. Um, but there are two types of kicks. All right? uh, well, actually, there's three. There's the front leg strike. And the front leg strike with the front legs, um, that is definitely a, a no-go zone to start with. Uh, you don't go anywhere near the front legs like that. Um, they'll clobber you, absolutely clobber you if they're going to strike with a front leg strike. There is no, There is no scale on a front leg kick. It is a whack, and that's it. Okay, and it. Uh, they can't soft the kick with a front. They can't soft kick with a front. Because they've got too much, you know, weight behind them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's definitely like right. Get out, get out of my space to kick. But with the back legs, okay, if you you touch them with a, a tickle stick or a, you know a cropper or something like that. Um, um, or a piece of poly or whatever you've got, okay, just to see what sort of kick there is. There's two types of kick. Uh, there's the get out of my space kick, which is more like a push, a, a fast push. And then there's the back leg kick, which I call the GF kick. You know, if you want to work that out, then you can work that out. It's um, definitely the like... get F U C K. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'll say it for you. You will, you will. Um, and that is definitely uh, something to be aware of, okay? It's if important to fine. note about this stick or what have you, whatever you are dealing with, is this is purely an arm extender. Mm. You're not using it to hit the animal. No. You, you know, you'd use it as you'd use your arm, but you're in a very safe zone. Mm. So, you know, it's an extension of your arm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point, Tara. Huh? Really good point because, um, I mean, we use tickle sticks in our training. Uh, where we're tickling the underbelly of the camels, and uh, and that's what we're doing is tickling, right? So that's hence the name, tickle stick, um, and it's an extension of our arm, and so using that extension to touch the leg of the camel to see what sort of kick it is is wise, right? Keeps you away from that kick, 
and therefore keeps you safe. So Unless you really want to go in there and no, touch no, your camel with really your arm. Even, I wouldn't even dream. I mean, most it. people wouldn't do that. No. It, I mean, camels kick kick hard. You know, when they mean it, they kick hard. So yeah. it's uh, it's it's for your safety and theirs too. They don't want to hurt you, but if they're scared, you know, that's just their natural reaction. Totally. Yeah, okay. So the, the, the kick, really, really important, okay? If they've got a nice soft sort of lift of the leg or, you know, just a get out of my space type kick, um, then you know that the camel, well, one thing that uh, you can be relatively sure of is that the camel's relatively comfortable, just wants you out of their space. But if it's the other type of kick, then, um, yeah, it certainly um, it doesn't put points on the scoreboard. Um, and if you're not sure, try a couple of camels if you can. If you're in a more domestic situation where there's just one single camel for sale, um, you know, check, just do this, do this test still. But you, like, obviously a very, a very violent kick, you know, is some red flags. But mm. you've got to also keep in mind how the camel might p be perceiving this as well, mm. you know, because they may, like, you'd be surprised that we've had people come to us who've had trained camels and they've come to one of our courses and this camel's been working for six, seven years and we put a stick behind it and guess what? It mm. kicked the bejeebas out of that stick. Mm. <laughs> so it was, but, you know, that could have been because it was in a different environment. It had been transported there and all that sort of stuff. So there's a few variables, but, um, you know, the there's no rush to buy a camel, yeah. you know. I, I wouldn't rush the process. So you could go for another visit and, you know, get a feel for the situation if you're in more of a singular camel for sale, in, you know, situation. Absolutely. And I suppose the other point that we need to, you know, stress here uh, is that, well, that if a camel gives a bejeebus kick, I'm going to use that. That's quite good. Can I use that? Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, bejeebus, a bejeebus kick. I like it. Mm. Oh, we might put that up on the website. Yeah. A bejeebus kick. People might actually write in and say, what's a bejeebus? I don't even know how to spell it. Oh, we'll make it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, it's, it's not to say that the camel's a write-off, okay? Um, it's just a red flag. Um, all camels, all camels with good training and good procedures will come good. Mm. Okay, um, that is that is a guarantee. Uh, in time with the work um, and the training, uh, and the right training. I mean, yeah. you know, we've been around this industry long enough to know there there is a way that camels will come good. There's a way that camels won't come good too. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen it. We've received those camels secondhand. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's just to emphasise that, that, yeah. that there, there is a right way to help them come good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I've got to give the camel some credit. Uh, that's the thing. Hmm. All right. Um, okay, so my next point here, so we've been through the eye, we've had a look at the kick, and the strut. The strut. I love that word. But the strut, uh, the way the camel work, walks through the pens and the yards, you know, is it a nervous run and jump and carry on and uh, quickly and, you know, the potential of uh, hurting itself or you know, whatever. And if it's with an owner, how is it reacting to the owner? Yeah. Is, it, is there some connect or disconnect or just, you know, really feel into that? Yeah. And also it's the camel strutting with confidence. Now... If I had a camel, okay, so so far, looking at a camel in a yard, if the camel had a nice smooth eye, um, you know, fairly confident, and even if it had a get out of my space kick and the strut was confident, then I'd be putting ticks on that. I'd be putting ticks on that camel so far. Um, that's how I would look at that camel, all right? So, yeah, the strut, it's, it's important. It's but if important. a camel's shying away from you, like if it's in a, like a, a situation like we have here in Australia where you can have the pick of a lot of camels um, and there seems to be a lot of camels for sale at once, you know, sometimes the ones at the back of the herd might not be coming forward but they're showing some sort of curiosity as well. Mm. Like maybe they would like to if 
Bob at the front wasn't so, you know, possessive with so, his herd or absolutely. leadership and things like that. So um, there's lots of variables to this. Yeah. And I guess uh, the important point we're trying to make with all these tips is you've really got to, um, you know, have some animal sense about you. And if you don't, you know, get somebody with you to do that with you and also follow along these practical tips as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you've mentioned it, the curiosity. Mm. Alright, so yeah, if you come, if you're just standing there at the pen or the rails of the yard, and uh, and the camel actually comes over, you know, to sort of extend its head to try to sniff, uh, there's a lot of curiosity there. That takes a lot of guts for a little camel, especially to have no uh, interaction with a human being before. Mm. All right, so they're curious. So that's actually a good sign. Mm. Yeah. Well, they're they're going to be more willing to connect and yeah, that's, and wanting to that's find what we out teach. who you are. And even the domestic camel, you know, comes over, comes over for the sniff. Well, you know, that's that's a nice sign. All right, the curiosity with a little bit of confidence. All right, so yeah, so so far we've got eye kick, strut, and curiosity of the camel. Uh, anything else you want to say about the curiosity, Tara? Uh, well, no, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, that, mm. yeah, okay. All right, well, my next little dot point here is appeal. Oh, I wonder what I mean by that. What do you reckon I mean by that, Tara? Hmm? Appeal. Well, it's hard to say for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's like how you, sometimes when you say stuff, it's like... That's not what you mean at all. Okay. So. But you're the English teacher. You okay. Can ask. All right. Okay. So appeal. Are you uh, uh, are you attracted to this particular camel? All right. Do you have an attraction that you can't explain to this camel? Uh, and like I said, you don't necessarily have to explain. Oh, I like him because of his colour, or I like him because of, or her, um, or because of um, the way that uh, you know it lifts its tail. I mean, I don't know, you know, whatever it might be. But there's an appeal there that you just cannot explain. In fact, that's probably one of the. If you're going to take anything from this podcast, take that away because when we have camels for sale here, when we get a small herd out from the arid zones here in Australia and we bring them into our yards here and people this is this is how we take people through the choosing process we tell them don't overthink don't overthink this okay like you know we've already vetted them for physical attributes which we're going to get into next so stick with us um we're like don't overthink this just have feel into which camel you feel drawn to or appeal to um, and don't overthink it. Maybe let that camel come up to you. Um, and this process, we haven't had a mismatch in this, you know, the, mm. the years that we've been selling camels like this. These camels are undomesticated, mind you, um, you know, so feral. And, yeah, we, everybody's just fallen in love, head over heels over their camels and so grateful that they're in their lives because we didn't say, well, this camel's going to be good for you. We let that process take we trusted that process that that appeal process would actually um take place itself and it did and people have just been so happy with that yeah yeah and that's that's uh, it's it's because okay the reason is okay in your training of your camel i mean obviously it's not going to be overnight when talking of over an extended period of time there will be challenges all right there will be challenges i will guarantee you that resistance uh, and all sorts of things will happen okay as the camel matures and grows up just like our kids you know there's challenges along the way and if you like your camel and it's un and an unexplained love um, for this camel you will go through those challenges you'll be prepared to go through whatever it takes to be able to reach your goals with that camel all right so um, you've got to like the camel. You really have to like it. Yeah, for sure. So the appeal of the camel, unexplained appeal, is is vital. It's vital. Otherwise, it's going to become a paddock ornament. I guarantee that too. Mm. All right? If you don't like being around your camel, um, then you're not going to be willing to go into the training sessions with it. 
So yeah, like make sure you like the camel that you're looking at of, uh, of getting the right camel. Well, camels want connection, so it, you're doing both yourselves a favour. Yeah. In that sense. For sure. When you're looking at the camel also, the next point I have is what purpose are you doing, uh, getting into camels for? What purpose are you buying this camel? All right, now is the purpose that you are thinking, okay, well, I'm thinking of a wagon maybe, or perhaps a riding camel, or a trekking camel, or even just simply a weed eater. What does the camel look like? What does it look like it could handle? Does it have a nice broad chest on it, uh, muscular, stocky, you know, could be good for you know, a strong camel for pulling a wagon if that's what you're after? Um, is it um, pulling a wagon or driving as pe other people might know? Oh, it driving is. a wagon, yeah, Dri no, driving, just cool. It's just cool driving, like in where a car. you stand, stand you... behind the camel with reins and you know, oh, drive yeah. it, drive. You're driving the camel, driving the camel, right? Okay, not like, yeah, there's a, an ad for Toyota. Did you know about this? The ad for Toyota years ago, it had Colin the camel. No, I did not know that. Oh, didn't you? Yeah, it was a cartoon it's probably character. probably on YouTube somewhere. And, uh, Colin, oh, cartoon, yeah, I do remember that. Colin the yeah. Camel, you'd be sitting there driving the Toyota. Mm. And it was, oh, what a feeling. And, yes, uh, I do remember the Camel. The well, did you know that that Camel was actually called after a guy who had a private zoo in a little country town here in Victoria, Australia, at Buxton? And his name was Colin. And his next-door neighbour was an advertising man who actually made those ads. Hey. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so just in case you didn't know where Colin the Camel from the Toyota ads came from. Um, but yeah, okay, let's get back to the purpose. Um, so wagon or, or riding or driving the camel or a weed eater. Um, well, if it's a weed eater, you just need a nice camel, I suppose. Uh, companion. You know, yeah, or a companion, a friend, a pet. Um but yeah, if you've got a specific purpose in Trekking, mind, then think of the expedition. purpose and see, you know, well, would this camel, does his build look like it could do that job? Okay, because, um, yeah, a skinny camel um, may not be suitable for putting on a wagon, for example. Actually, a, a note on that, it's, it's definitely helpful just to sort of, it's not really off topic, it's helpful. But, you know, if you're looking at buying a camel and you're finding, and, and you found some camels or what have you, um, and that camel is um, underweight, it does take a while to get weight, especially if it's a young camel um, or even an older camel. It tends to, the camels seem to put on weight, um, like lose weight quickly, but to put it on it, it's 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 hard work and um i only say this because there's been clients of ours who've acquired camels from like sale yards and things like that and they had a lot of trouble and continue to have a lot of trouble with parasites um which is a point that we should make here is that um i would not hesitate if i was buying a camel from someone else or a sale yard to get those camels test you know um have a a mod modified stool test, mm -hmm. which is not the... Not the Mac flow. Mac Mac oh, God, I've forgotten. Not the... Fl yeah. Hang on, what the is... float test. Yeah, it's the float test, yeah. But it's a it's called a modified stool test. Um, get that one done because that will show other parasites that the, the normal test, which most vets do, that this test will show what that normal test doesn't usually uh, show. Hang on, hang on. Can I, uh, hang on. Isn't the float test the... Normal one no. and the centrifuge one so, well, is yes. so the modified one. You've still got to go through that process, but it's an extra step. Right, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. that's good, that's good. Claire. Centrifuge, you've got to ask for that particular yeah. And test. it is a bit more expensive, but... Yeah, well, I mean, in Australia, it's about 180 almost 200 bucks. Yeah, which for, for 350 you buy the test kit. Yeah, yeah, you can buy your own test kit and do, you learn it off YouTube. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, that's what I've done, so... Um, you can learn, yeah, you can, just having those tests is so important because you get, that's going to tell a lot, if camels have parasites, it's, it's really hard, especially a lot of them, it's really hard to get on top of that. But if you're committed to that process, then that's not a problem. But if you sort of want to buy a healthy camel, that's something to consider. Mm. Um, another thing that was recommended to us, um, when we asked about 
buying camels in the United States when we were over there last year, a vet had told us, she said, look, I think everyone before buying a camel, I think they should get a full head scan of the camel to test for osteodystrophy Mm. because it's Mm. a very, very common disease. It's not a contagious disease, Mm. um, but it's very common, uh, basically malnourishing in a sense. It's... We'll go through that probably in another separate podcast, but yeah. um, get tested, get them tested for that too, um, because that's just death row for them basically. Yeah, like it hasn't been curable; it's been manageable. But yeah, a it's, couple of cases it's, that we know of. But yeah, it's not yeah. pleasant for them. It really isn't. We've yeah. we've been through it ourselves, and it's devastating for the camel because they ended up they end up not not breathe, being able to breathe. I've actually posted a YouTube video of the camels that we had that had it. Um, just if you want to look at that, you can do that. So getting the parasite test and the test for osteodystrophy, which can be blood and also a head scan to see if there's any growth inside the nose. And also we should really hear talk about the... Um... The feet. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to go into that? Yeah, well, obviously the feet are probably the most important part of the camel and it it goes into their health and well-being because, well, it does depend on their purpose. Like if the camel you're buying is for weight-bearing purposes, that means riding, trekking, uh, you know, even extended periods of time where the camel's walking, Mm -hmm. you've you've got to look at the feet. So the best way I can explain it through here to try and give you a visual of it is that the the leg bone the bottom of the leg bone of the camel needs to be sitting direct this is for front and back directly on top so in the center of the camel's pad or the camel's foot so it's it's straight up and down mm-hmm. if the, if the leg bone comes back which so if it you, sort if we, of looks like a big slipper with a bit of a well, extended well, front for the horsey people, it's called a fallen hop right. or a sunken hop right. or, a, you know, it's not, if it's not, that leg bone's not sitting right in the center of that camel's foot, yeah. then it's not going to be suitable for weight bearing exercises. Right. It's just going to be painful for them. And most of them are very susceptible to arthritis. Right. Um, and yeah. Is it a genetic thing? Well, yeah. That happens, or well, uh, is it, um, well, I don't. I'm not. Or? I'm not a scientist, a veterinary no. scientist. But from what I've heard from other vets, it can be genetic, and it can also be just lack of um, nourishment, minerals, and all that sort of stuff. So, right. yeah, but it's interesting. I mean, I see it in Australia too, which makes me think it could be. Well, yes, yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a veterinary scientist, but that's what I've heard. So, yeah, yeah, we'll get the vet on here one day, and she can tell us all about it. Which that'd be cool. We've got a resident vet. We haven't told you guys yet, but oh, hey, oh, you just we did just that. slipped it out. Anyway, we'll talk about more about that later. Okay, that's going to be great. Yes. Yeah, really, really good. Okay. Um, well, where we go there? Wagon, um, for purpose, and all that. Okay. Well, yeah. I think since we're talking about physical, we need to talk about um, the dromedariobactrian camel, because I mean, in the states, they mm. have an option, yeah. and they actually have the option of D one and D two as well, which is yeah. a whole other topic. That's another topic. That's yeah. interbreeding, basically. Um, so yeah, I get from what our clients have told us that they usually either have a desire for a dromedary or a Bactrian or both. Uh, from my understanding, it's like some people go, well, I wanted a Bactrian because it's got a built-in saddle, which is true. It does. Mm-hmm. You can sit in between the humps. Mm-hmm. A dromedary, it's more awkward to ride bareback on them. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you've got the associated costs of saddles and all that mm-hmm. and equipment. And that's another topic in itself because there's so many different types of saddles out there. Yes, yeah. And you can get saddles for Bactrians too, but mm. you don't have to, mm. <laughs> let's face it. Um, so, yeah, f- like people go, should I get a dromedary Bactrian? What's the difference in behaviour? We actually did a podcast on this a couple of episodes back, so you can go and listen to that, mm-hmm. dromedary versus, ba- versus Bactrian camels and what we have learnt in the past few years from dealing with both. Um, you can go back and listen to that. But all in all, you know, I, I definitely think the, the best situation you can put yourself in is being, being able to test 
you know, the count, if there might be a dromedary for sale near you or there might be a Bactrim for sale near you. Go and test these camels. Mm. And in saying that, um, a point that maybe we made in another episode was that you need to ask the owner, like if the owner says this camel is trained or can do things, that owner needs to prove that. Oh, can I, we can hold that thought. Right, well, that's where we're at. So No, not quite. I've um, got a few more. So uh, just uh, if I... Do we uh, have to go in order? Yeah, we do. Right. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Because I'm a bit aimed. We're getting there, people. <laughs> okay. Um, age. Age of the camel. All right. So um, if you're wanting a camel, you want to know its history, we'll start from the very beginning, from the, the, the little camel, uh, from a baby camel. Um, and by baby, I'm not saying, you know, straight from its mum either. I mean, I think... Personally, and I'm going to say this outright, that I do think that the camels really do need that time with their mum. Oh, well, I think we did a whole episode Uh, on that. Yeah, yeah, I really do believe in that. That's how they learn to be a camel. They learn to be a camel. They get the colostrum, you know, initially, and, um, you know, the mum's there, the camel's growing up, um, you know, and... If it's possible. And to be honest... um, you know, any sort of training and that sort of stuff. Um, yes, you can play around with the little ones and yes, you can sort of train them into it. But it's sort of like, for, for me, it's like, you know, sending the kids to, to preschool school too when early. they're one year old yeah. um, rather than four year old or whatever. Mm. Okay. We and actually have a rule on our farm here and we've had a couple of baby camels that we don't we don't overtouch them mm. until they turn two or three, mm. and um, that's just been a rule. And the kids know that our kids know that, so mm. that they're not oh baby camel just like they're give just it, out in the paddock let with it have their its mum. space, and the rest of the herd. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a rule that we have. Yeah, and uh, and it actually pays off its dividends when it comes to training the camel. Oh, it's easier. It's easier, and also the camels just manage to develop that little bit of maturity and respect and uh, can understand a little bit of the concept of boundaries. Mm. And uh, and that's the way we do things, you know. Other people do other things and, you know, whatever. That's fine. Camels but, uh, teach camels we, boundaries. We, this is how we do things and we think that we're happy with that and that's why we're telling you. Yeah. Well, yeah. otherwise we wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. So the age, I mean, you know, if you're wanting to know the history of the camel and that sort of stuff and, you know, with its training regime... Um, what's gone into the camel as far as its training goes, then, yes, certainly the young camel. Um, and we've always been, no, we've always trained from two and a half years on onwards, really, mm-hmm. um, for the reasons that we just mentioned before. And, you know, there's other people that do other things, that's fine, but this is, we can only say what we're doing, and that's all there is to it, yeah, really. Um, the health of the camel. Well, there's a reason we say what we say too, yeah, yeah. and do what we do. Like, oh, yeah. you know, there's there's a method to the madness. There is a method. <laughs> Some to people the go, how can you resist a baby camel? Like, well, no. we know we know the we know that they get bigger. We 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 understand camels and their psychology, so that's mm. what is is a driving factor, really. Yeah, mm. yeah, for sure. Now, the health of the camel is important and uh, we've already touched on the stool tests um see about parasites and that sort of stuff um look if you really wanted to go into it and it was okay by the owner you know you, you, you're serious about um looking at this camel seriously and you wanted to get some blood samples done to see what sort of um you know if it's got any deficiencies in there and that sort of stuff and if the owner is willing um, of which which case, they should be. They, well, yeah, they should be, yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, it's only to them, to the animal's benefit, uh, benefit mm. really, and to the owner, um, because if there are deficiencies and you don't want that camel, well, I mean, the owner really, as a responsible owner, will say, well, I've got to look at this situation. Yeah. Um, or even if you choose to buy it still, maybe at uh, even a discounted rate, uh, yeah, you but, you know what to, to tackle. Uh, that's it, you know, you're getting yourself well aware. You know full well whether or not those Toyota parts are genuine or... Uh, not genuine at that rate. If mm. you've gone ahead and taken your car to a, a licensed, registered 
mechanic who does inspections for such things as sales. Well, what's the problem? Why can't we do that with camels too? Mm, it's not you know? done enough, I must say. Yeah, no, true, true. So in saying that, that comes to my next point being the history of the camel. Right? So if it's an older camel, what is the history of this camel? You know, Most people have an idea, even if the camel's had a couple of owners, but they certainly know the previous owner or the previous you know, two owners or something like that. They have some idea. Mm. Um, it's rare that you come across a, a case where no one knows anything about the camel. Mm. Uh, Unless so it's the, like a deceased estate or something and it's just been handed down. But, yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. There's always the exception to the rule, but... Yeah, most people would know something of the history of the camel, and it's a worthwhile question asking. Okay. Um, so also looking at that, it leads to the prior experience, ex prior experience in the training of the camel. Mm. All right. So the owner of the camel that's up for sale um, says to you, for example, okay, says to you, fully trained camel, riding, you know, been doing this, that and the other. Okay. Show can me. you please show me? Can you please show me? You show know? me everything this camel can do. Yeah. Um, that will definitely give you a really good indicator because you'll be able to see how the camel reacts to the, the handler as well, which mm. will give you a big insight to the camel's personality or, you know, how it's been trained and all that sort of stuff. That will give you a big insight. But, you know, a lot of people assume that getting a trained camel is better. Mm. And mm. it's not necessarily true. Um, it really depends on what you want this camel for. Do you want it for a riding operation It's going straight into work as soon as you get it? Or are you wanting to build a relationship with this animal? Mm. You have some intentions, but they're not urgent intentions, mm. maybe in the future. These, and most, to be honest, most of you listening have, aren't, aren't operators per se. You, you want to build this relationship and you have a future plan for the camel. Then it doesn't, you know, having a trained or untrained camel does not make, uh, you know, should not be, um, what am I trying to say here? Um, train camel, <laughs> we always start, I guess I can only speak from what we do. We always start our clients out on camels that aren't trained. Why? Um, because we see the connection that can be built and the trust that can be built from a yeah. clean slate. Mm -hmm. Yes, we could train camels and sell them. We mm -hmm. do not, but mm -hmm. we could do that. And then we'd probably, yeah, sure. We'd probably sell probably a few camels. A nice quick back there. Yeah. We're not interested in that. We want to see humans connecting with camels and we see the best way that they do that is by having a clean slate, which is a camel that's been, you know, barely handled really. Mm -hmm. um, and we just see the magic happen between the human and camel. So yeah. that that is what we do here. We do not sell trained camels. In fact, we don't sell camels at all unless that person is committed to doing the course. Mm. Um, why sell a camel? Well, why sell? I always say, why sell a car without its keys? And that's like selling a camel without learning how to handle it. Mm. Did you have something to yeah. say? Yeah, no, no, no. I think that's all reason. I mean, you know, that's how we do things, and uh, we've got specific reasons why we do that. You know, because we're really focusing in on training the people. Yeah. Um, to train the camels. I mean, you know, we can sell camels uh, tomorrow, you know, train camels, no problem. Um, but in saying all that, like, I mean, you know, there are camels that, I mean, you know, people's situations change and they've got to sell their camel on and it might be a perfectly good trained camel. Mm. Uh, but the word trained can mean different things to different people. Well, this too. is it. There's no industry standard for a trained camel. No, there's not. And I think it would be a tough one to actually... But in the horse industry, juice. there is. You've got different levels and you've got, you know, yeah. like all of that stuff. Like yeah. it's been through Pony Club. Like in, in the camel world, a trained camel could act, mean absolutely anything. Yeah, we yeah. know that because we've yeah. been through that. And I want to give an example of, um, of, of a camel that uh, I bought many, many years ago. It was an older camel. And uh, and he was making noises, um, 
when, you know, put, putting a saddle on and, uh, you know, he was giving a groan out, okay? It wasn't much of a groan, but it was a groan. And for his riding operation, he didn't want that, this owner, um, because, as he said, it, you know, did frighten some of the kids, <laughs> okay? Um, now, that's not a problem to us. I mean, you know, we... Yeah, the camel's having a bit of a chat, as yeah. far as we're concerned, you know. It, it's uh, no, no it's part of their And thing. he was a lovely old camel. I mean, you know, he was an older camel. Um, but he still had a couple of years, you know, of work left in him. And um, a beautiful, beautiful old camel. Now, so for that owner, he was a fully trained camel. And he was. He, you know, the owner showed me... Well, exactly what this camel could do, and there was absolutely nothing wrong. He'd obviously been worked well, um, with a lot of love and a lot of care and attention, but yeah, he did this groaning thing. Mm. All right? But for his operation, uh, he didn't want that camel. So I, I, I don't mean to say, say this, but I can't get the words right at the moment, but one man's trash is another man's treasure. Mm. All right, so there's that old saying. And, uh, but for me, that camel was gold. Mm, you were lucky right? to get that camel. Absolute gold. <laughs> I mean, they're rare. Because I had young camels who were still a bit silly and still a bit immature that needed that maturity inside the herd. Mm. All right. So, of course, that camel went straight at the back of the string as the old mate and uh, a trusted old mate and a general leading the army from the rear. And, uh, and the, the other camels looked to him for comfort and he was my gold, mm. right, that old camel. And uh, so, yeah, he was my treasure. Mm. So that's another thing that you need to think of. What is they the are purpose? rare, though. <laughs> I've yeah, got to say, it's, uh, it was just a lucky the rare strike gold, and you know, a very honourable and uh, highly respected camel owner. And he was selling the camel, and uh, mm. I was lucky right there and then. You know, very a lot lucky. of people come to us, you know, from the states or questioning from Australia, and they say, you know, I want to buy a trained camel. Where can I get one? We just like. Oh, you know, like I wish it was easier. It's mm. just, the industry's just not that big, like the horse industry. Mm. Like you, you can find a decent horse. You, there's a whole. I remember when I was, you know, there's horse deals, and it's a magazine. It's you know, put two both your hands together. It's as thick as two hands together, just full of horses for sale. Mm. <laughs> we mm. don't have that for camels, no. um, but you know, we will get there for sure. But whether it be horses, whether it be dogs, whether it be goldfish or camels, mm. uh, um, you test run. How do you test run a test goldfish? Run. Well, I'm wondering that myself. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, test run. You Make know. sure it's a good pet. Yeah, definitely. And this is where the seller, you know, don't take it for word. We've made that mistake um, before too, to let you know, okay? We've made, you know, so many mistakes. Um, and uh, That's and why we're here, to to teach you, to, to telling everybody tell you about not them. To do what we've done half the time, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely take it for a test run, even if you're new and um, you're, you don't have the skills or you've never operated with camels before, but the owner, have a look at the owner is operating that camel, if they're operating at all, or if they're just hanging over the fence and saying, you know, yeah, well, there's a camel for sale, you know, take it or leave it, well, um, what can the camel do? Can you show us, please? And if they're not willing to show you, then why? You know, are they saying, well, it's a, it's a trained camel, but it's not really, or whatever, mm -hmm. okay? You've got to make those decisions yourself. But um, it's a big investment, and it's a, a long-term investment, too, that you're making. And, uh, and you're going to be feeding the camel and the vet bills and all the other associated things that go along with owning large animals. So it's wise it's a long to game. just simply, you know... Play, play it straight. Mm. Play it straight. That's all I've got. But yeah. I think that's um, a relatively good list. There, I think some, there's some great tips in there. You can listen to this again if you haven't written them down and write them down. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this is all the stuff that we've learned from our mistakes, basically. Mm. So, you know, Russell's got... Well, yeah. a lot of experience <laughs> many many years you know and I've been in the industry for what seven years now so mm. and obviously the horse industry as well mm. 
um, you know, so you learn these mistakes as you go. Um, and, you know, good advice. There's a lot of good, but I've had a lot of good advice along the way mm. from various sources, many sources, as well as, um, you know, come up with my own things, as well as make mistakes. And that's the way that the world works. Yeah. Um, so just to recap on those points there on how to choose the right camel for you, all right, whether it be domestic or um, a feral camel or in a herd or individually, okay, essentially these elements go ahead and relate to all of those um, situations. So the eye, the kick, the strut, curiosity, appeal, purpose, age, health, history, prior experience and or training, and test run. And physical attributes. I mean, that's sort of health and well-being, but yeah, physical yeah. attributes. Yeah. All right. Well, we hope you got lots of value from this. Um, let us know in the comments on our blog, or you can leave a review here for our podcast, because if you leave a review, it actually tells other people that this is half decent to listen to. <laughs> So we well, actually fully decent, yeah, well, it was fully decent. well the way that the algorithms work oh. on on the Apple iTunes and any 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 podcast platform is that the more that it's commented on or the more that it's reviewed that's going to show up so other people can find it. It's like Facebook and you know, Instagram. And oh, stuff like okay. That. So, so if we say something controversial, that'll give us a lot of comments, whether they be positive or negative. Well, we'll better no. You need list. good reviews, not oh, bad reviews. I see. Okay. Well, we're don't leave a that. bad review. <laughs> don't go that road. Okay. Um, but if you've been listening for a while and you have still not left a review, please do. You're like mm. our. You know, you. We're so grateful you're here, and mm. it would really help us. Um, you know, giving you all this content if you would leave us a nice review, because <laughs> um, bad ones don't really help anyone really. Um, so yeah, that would be really, really great if you could do that on the iTunes podcast Excellent. or wherever you're listening. Really. Excellent. Cool. Thanks so much for tuning in. Absolutely. We can't wait to share the next episode with you. You're gonna love it. I think it's an interview, actually. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. So that will be really exciting. You guys are going to love it. I yeah, can't wait to right. share that with you. Yeah. Hey, and listen, also, if you've got a story of your own, let us know. Mm. All right? Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're open um, to any suggestions of what we could possibly do here. Um, or you've got a topic request. Yeah. And, um, and we might even put out a call out in the near future about something pretty special. But anyway, we'll let you, we'll let you just chew on that one. Yeah, we've dropped a few, a few, a few, a few little, little nuggets there. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later. Bye. Bye. If you like this information we've just shared with you, you'll be sure to love the free Camel eBooks and training videos that we're giving away. We're giving away two Camel eBooks, Introduction to Camels and Introduction to Camel Training. Plus, in our bonus Camel Training videos, we take you through training and handling camels built on connection and trust. And we also share how to understand a camel's way of thinking. This is gold information that you don't want to miss. So be sure to sign up now to get your free ebooks and training videos over at camelconnection.com.